I know that. Okay. The great unsinkable ship that sank. Over a century later, the mystery of the Titanic is still being studied to this day. Only a third of the ship's passengers survived, while okay. over 1,500 lost their lives. But out of all those casualties, only 340 bodies were recovered. So the question remains, what happened to the remaining 1,160? I'll get there shortly. But first, a quick recap. When the RMS Titanic went down after crashing into an iceberg on April 14, 1912, hundreds of people perished in the freezing waters of the Northern Atlantic Ocean. One of the main reasons all these people were left to wait for rescue in 28 degree water, which would all too quickly claim lives before that rescue came, was that the Titanic didn't have enough lifeboats for all its passengers. There were only 20, and they needed 60 to be able to carry everybody on board to safety. As for why there was such a drastic shortage of lifeboats, that's because there had been complaints that the deck was too cluttered looking when they did have a sufficient amount. What's even worse, the first few lifeboats that were released after the collision weren't even filled up halfway, which could have saved so many more lives. Perhaps those poor souls could have been rescued from the bone-chilling waters a lot sooner if the closest ships passing by the Titanic's crash site had seen the flares and other distress signals being sent. But many of them didn't because of something called light refraction. This phenomenon could also explain why the Titanic's lookouts hadn't seen the iceberg until it was too late. There are others, however, who say that this was because of the fact that they didn't have binoculars. Woohoo! I am golden! Okay, the here you go. Okay, here you go. Okay, here you go. Bánh màu Bánh đi tù Bánh đi tù Tiếp cháu lên đỉnh tháp Cháu lên đỉnh tháp Maybe oh, if the Titanic oh. had been sailing at a safer speed, it would have had time to steer away from the iceberg, even if it had noticed a little too late due to the lack of binoculars. Then challenge the There was a whole series of unfortunate events leading to the ship's collision and the fact that so ah, many people wait, were left where's Uber, and their bodies not retreat. Then challenge the so, One theory about where the bodies might have gone is that they were lost at sea. Only hours after the Titanic sank, a massive storm the would have swept many bodies up to 50 miles away from the crash site. This could explain why the first ships to arrive at the scene didn't find them. Of course, there were those victims that went down to the ship, and they had no chance of being retrieved. As for the bodies that were recovered, some were proper burial at sea, if there wasn't room for them on the rescue ship. This was mostly third-class passengers whose families wouldn't have likely had the time to be transported to Halifax, Canada to be real and flowy. But there are also graves of unidentified victims that were given burial in the cemetery too. Probably never the location or fate of the unknown bodies. So we can therefore only rely on the theories of those who have been studying the Titanic all this time and trying to unveil this tragic mystery. Revenge may have lost their lives to this horrific catastrophe that possibly could have been prevented but there are those who made it out alive and did what they could to help others as well if you saw james Cameron's famous 1997 film 
based on these events, then you might remember the character Molly Brown being one of the first to make it out on a lifeboat and trying to convince the quartermaster that they should go back to get more survivors. Well, Molly Brown was, in fact, a real person. And there are accounts that she actually did do this. The brave and selfish woman earned herself the nickname the unseen woman Molly After the ship went down, she tried to get as many of those passengers as she could in the lifeboats. But the philanthropist's good work didn't end there. Hello. After she yeah. the catastrophe and being rescued by the RMS Carpathia, ah. Brown's yeah, and other first-class survivors oh my God, and put together an organization to help second- and third-class survivors with counseling and other basic needs. She also campaigned for education of the poor and for women's rights. In 1914, she for the Senate. And after oh, the First World War, oh my God, a vast flower. Okay. She Beatrice. was truly a remarkable and inspiring woman. There was also author, journalist, and teacher Lawrence Beasley. Beasley was a second-class passenger from the UK who was busy reading a book in his cabin when the ship hit the iceberg. Bye, going on. He asked a steward what had happened, and the steward tried to assure him that it was nothing to worry about. Luckily, Beasley decided to go up to Asia, and since there were no one who was going to jump in the lifeboat number 13, just before it was 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 number 13, who was a stewardess on the ship. Uh, yeah. She uh, 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 for the job. She was in her cabin, uh, uh, to sleep in her bunk, when the Titanic hit the iceberg. She was immediately ordered to go and... I'm back. Ha ha, you're back. She was put into lifeboat 16, <laughs> along with the baby to take care of. Oh no, 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 no. Oh. Uh, float in the ocean. Uh, another ship saved the people. No. She got revenge. Vimy, 196. Jessup's survival skills. Bazi. Yet again. I got it. Bazi. Now, one. And it's a whole amount. Hello, Rocky Pat. 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 Hello, Rocky Pat.
your phone number is identified on the other end of the line. Then comes revenge, the that revenge, uh, revenge. You get a call from a private number, and the person who identifies oh. themselves okay, as a representative 